3D printing is an umbrella of technologies that creates parts by fusing them together from a smaller substance to a larger substance. What you see out of this is different surface finishes per technology. I want to demystify what to expect when you order parts in different 3D printing processes in this video. We're going to talk about SLA, metal 3D printing through DMLS, FDM, SLS, and multi-jet fusion. So stay tuned. As I mentioned before, this is all about 3D printed surface finishes. So I'm going to highlight six technologies in this video. FDM, SLS, Polyjet, SLA, HP Multijet Fusion, and direct metal laser centering. As you can see here, the surface finishes vary greatly. And the reason why is each one of these is made in a different type of manufacturing process. So 3D printing is an umbrella of technologies. And it's just something to understand that they have strengths and trade-offs between each technology. FDM extrudes parts out through a filament. So basically layering by layering with an extruded plastic filament. ABS, Altum, polycarbonate, these materials can be made using fused deposition modeling and making your parts in those actual thermoplastics. Where SLS, multi-jet fusion, these two in the middle, they're using nylon as their base material. And both have a similar outcome where parts are fused together with that nylon material, but they have different ways of doing that fusion. Either way, the surface finish is typically matte from the get-go, so you have kind of that matte, almost like a fine sugar cube type finish to it, and more of a medium level finish. Polyjet, you see some streakiness back and forth, and that's because it's ink jetted and deposited layer by layer with tiny micro droplets. And you have some unique material properties that you could get from that. SLA is cured in a vat, so you're actually creating a vat of liquid using a laser to selectively cure where the SLA parts are, and you get more of a smoother surface finish from it. In this case, probably the smoothest of any one of our te technologies. And then direct metal laser centering, another powder bed process. So like SLS, multi-jet fusion, uh, direct metal laser centering also has that orange peely, almost sugar cube-like finish to it. So do not expect smooth, expect that matte across the part. Diving deeper into this, what can I do with these materials? So let's focus on our general purpose materials first. So I'm gonna go and focus on our powder bed fusion nylon materials. With SLS nylon, I can do things like tint the material. In this case, you see that green tint on the part. Naturally, it comes out white. So I don't need support structure on this, so I'm gonna have a similar surface on the front and back. I know with this camera, it's hard to see white, but uh, just uh, believe me, it's stark white here. Let's take a look at the green to show that surface finish. And more commonly, you may actually see parts dyed black. In a lot of cases, we're actually media tumble and dye black, uh, dyeing black these parts. Multi-jet fusion, you have your natural finishes. So this is unfilled and this is glass filled. SLS has a glass filled variant that's a little bit more of a beige color. But you can see here that the outcomes are basically the same as far as surface finish goes between the variations of materials. And that's because there's an outer edging compound in the process that kind of gives that hybrid gray look. We also can dye this material black, and this, this has actually been uh, shot blasted and dyed black, so you have a nice kind of crisp black look to it. Something to note is that between these two materials here, if I took a knife and scraped the black dye nylon part for SLS, it'll come out stark white because that's what, that's what the base material is. And when you're dying, you're only penetrating about a quarter millimeter in. Where this material for multi-jet fusion, there's an inking compound that's black by its nature. And when I cut into this part, it will be black underneath. So sometimes when I'm looking for something that's gonna be abrased, like I know it's going to be roughed, roughed up or it may fall down in some gravel, maybe I'm gonna make my part in multi-jet fusion so that when it does get scraped, it won't have this bright white uh, scrape mark against it. When I think about these, I think about the middle range. And that's why I wanna start with these because they tend to be commoditized, uh, not, but they don't have super high resolution to them. And they also aren't too coarse either. So your middle range is gonna be these powder bed fusion plastics like SLS nylon or multi-jet fusion. 
Let's move and I'm gonna keep one of these comparisons here. I'm just gonna keep that green one because it shows really nicely. And I'm gonna move these away. And let's talk about FDM. So FDM is our mo most coarse looking material. And I'm gonna show you a few variations of FDM here. So we have many colors. In fact, we have 16 colors available for, your, for fused deposition modeling. And of course I have two black parts here, so you can't tell too much of the difference here, but you can see that uh, the top layer tends to have that zigzag look and contoured layers will have more of that uh, stair stepping through. If, if I'm, I'm making a part that is larger, so larger than 14 inches, I will sometimes take my layers and move from 10 thousandths to 13 thousandths of an inch. And that's because I have to move to a larger platform. So we have a platform that builds up to 16 inches and we have a platform that builds up to 36 inches. When I move from 10 thousandths to 13 thousandths layers, you're gonna see more of a broader stair step on any, any of these gradual contours. And it's really important to know that because sometimes these large parts, so say I'm making a fender feature for a car frame, you have contours everywhere. So one of these faces is going to have more of a rough peak where it's gonna be the upward face uh, of those parts. And again, I have my SLS part for comparison to show the contrast between kind of the middle range SLS and our FDM pieces. In this case, this is a dark gray ASA in a 13 thousandths layer. So kind of from the most coarse 3D printed material to our middle range 3D printing material. Let's keep this on board here and let's move to some of our photo polymers. So I'm gonna take these guys out. I will bring in our polyjet piece back. So we have some uh, polyjet Vero clear material. And I'm also going to bring in a couple variations of SLA pieces to show you the difference between our different finish options. So polyjet, again, cre creates parts with micro droplets to it. So it's going to have that little bit of streak to it. And you may see more of a matte, uh, semi-layered, edge to it and that's just that layer by layer process as well as how the part is supported which is a gel like support structure. With SLA I have a gloss like upper level on my natural finish. So these parts were actually built as if they were built on this table here from the bottom to the top. That liquid resin when cured essentially puddled there or has that puddle like effect even though it's completely rigid. Uh, and you see that gloss. That being said, when I do a strip and ship finish or a natural finish and I have this natural facing up, any little imperfection, which is inherent in some of these builds, will show. So that nice gloss is interrupted by that little tiny uh, imperfection there. And there's nothing wrong with the part, but something to consider if you are choosing a natural strip and ship is you tend to get a little bit of the benefit of the polish. But depending on your orientation, you may also see wildly different surface finishes, especially when it comes to the supported side and the naturally built side. So a lot of times I will actually go and use this standard matte finish. So side by side, this is the same part, same build orientation, matte finish versus that natural finish. This is black ABS-like SLA material. And that matte finish gives a even look consistent, consistently throughout the part. So it's very important to know that matte typically is your best bet with SLA if you're looking for consistency. Because bringing it up to that nice little bead blast finish is going to make sure that all my edges look exactly the same. I did want to know with Polyjet, so Polyjet I can do a couple different finishes here. So let's put our three up here right now. Polyjet I can manipulate materials. So I have rubber-like materials. Note that they look almost identical surface finish wise, but you can see here, this is my Shore A27 super squishy rubber-like, and this is a Shore A90, much, much stiffer to manipulate, but it still has rubber-like properties to it. Uh, these are made on the same platform. It's actually a digital matrix of rigid rubber-like materials to make these features. So Polyjet's benefit is I could digitally manipulate the material to give it properties where parts like FDM are boutique builds, 
based off that material alone, like ABS, Ultim, Polycarbonate. I am building a build just to make that. Blue, red, yellow, building a build just to make that. Where this, you could do multiple different finishes, including a multi-material part in a single build with Polyjet. So I'm gonna bring back my SLAX. So now we have Polyjet, SLS, FDM, and SLA. And again, coarse, medium range, uh, pretty good, and probably the smoothest of the natural finish parts. I wanna show you some specialized finishing though, so you understand from our polymers uh, side what you can get out of these different processes. So the first one is our specialized finish for SLS nylon, which is nickel plating. This is actually a buildup of nickel on top of the part. So there's a, sl a slight layer of copper, and then most of this is nickel, and you're talking about four thousandths of an inch, so about a sheet of paper, a little bit less than a sheet of paper's worth of buildup. But notice that this is not a cosmetic look. You know, it's brighter because of the nickel content, but it is not glossy. It's actually exaggerating the ridges on the SLS part. So those layer lines you could clearly see here with that nickel plating. Nickel plating is meant to give the part more mechanical strength when you're applying it to 3D printing. So it's trying, say for example, I'm making a part that I want more metal-like properties, but I have a geometry that just screams, please 3D, 3D print me an SLS because I'm too complex to mill or even maybe cost prohibitive to grow in direct metal centering. Something else to note is with nickel plated parts, you may see little copper nubs, uh, and that's when you don't have any place to rack, so you'll actually drill in, make a little hook with copper so you could dip it into the electroplating bath. Uh, just something to be aware of if you don't have a natural feature like a little eye hook on your part already. The PSA part, it was built using fused deposition modeling, so these same processes here. But note that this part was built vertically, so it's getting that sidewall nice linear shape and getting a much smoother part than this than this feature. So say I'm building something that's larger and I have text on the top and text on the side, note that I'll have very different looks and appearances based off the orientation of the build, even if they're identical features. So lastly, I want to talk about surface finishing, particularly for SLA, because this is where a lot of the confusion comes in and a lot of the trouble comes with expectations. So we talk about three different types of finishes that you could drop down and select. So you have your mat, which tends to be our standard finish. Then you have your natural, which is I'm removing the part, I'm removing the support structures and doing light sanding. So this is actually soft to the touch or kind of more like a, it feels like a rigid plastic, but it has that satin look to it. And then we have strip and chip, which is where I am just removing support structure and doing nothing else. So I'm left with more core support structures. But depending on orientation, if I have a part like this, this part was actually built differently than, than the other parts here, where it was built vertical. So I have a much coarser portion where I've supported this part but because all this part was built vertical, I actually have a lot of great natural features that's gonna give me pretty good clarity from the strip and ship. But wait, there's more. So let's go and keep this mat on here. And I'm going to move our natural and strip and ship finishes and talk about what we can do with custom. So custom clear is requested a lot and there's a couple ways to do custom clears so we call it quick clear and water clear a lot of the times the quick clear would be growing your part doing minimal processing and then doing two spray coats with a clear coat and what that's going to do is actually help even out the surfaces and give you decent translucency to the part. I like to think ice cube with, click, with quick clear. Now this is a manual process and you do pay for that manual labor to have it done. It is not automated. So just understand the custom process, depending on the complexity of the part, uh, you will have to, uh, extra payments due to labor and that usually doesn't scale well either. So if you need 36 of these, that's gonna be 36 X times someone's doing this manual labor. Now, we have something that is even more laborious, but great for show models, which is the water clear. And again, this is a custom finish where you can select custom, putting your needs to this. 
And this is almost like polishing headlights. We're Weird. doing sanding stage by stage, basically, basically going from a lower grit to a higher and higher and higher grit, uh, getting the features and the layer lines removed as much as you possibly can. Note that in these corners, it could be very tough for me to actually manually remove that because I can't move sandpaper in that close. And then I do clear coats similar to the quick clear. But just note that by me treating the surface layer lines, I'm able to get a much better clarity out of my part. So this is probably the most clear you can get with SLA without heavy, heavy processing. But note that the difference between these two is a lot more manual labor. So natural, standard finish, decent amount of labor to make a quick clear, and then a lot of labor to make a water clear. So there you have it. You have different 3D printed surface finishes in different technologies. We went over six technologies, which I know is a lot, but I think this video is very helpful because there is so much confusion around which process does what and what's best to choose for your needs. If you have any questions or have any suggestions for us to add more content to Zometry, please feel free to reach out. We're always happy to help and explain more about our multiple processes. Go check it out, Zometry.com. Thanks so much.